his name was Billy. But you went through all that pain for someone and then he just died. It doesn't change what we did have. A fallen angel. An actual fallen angel. Just stay away from it. Some of what Richard says makes sense. Of course it does. He's demonic, not stupid. This is the clock that sat in the Kremlin and counted down to doomsday. And Mr. Mountjoy sent it to me. He's not about to let another of us fall. As long as you know that being with Hannah will probably mean the end of the world! How's he doing? You mean, apart from encouraging a punter to top herself? Yeah, he's still a bit down about that. But I told him, we all make mistakes, don't we? Apparently. He's still all right, actually, for a chorister. Mm. You should let him do more, staggering though it is to believe. He looks up to you. Oh, does he? Yeah, give him more responsibility. I think he'd really impress you. Where is he, anyway? What are you doing to that poor fish? Hello. Line caught on the tweed by a hirsute man called Malcolm, apparently. I suppose you're a wonderful cook. Lightly poached, griddled asparagus, avocado and watercress salad. That... that sounds delicious. If you ever want anyone to help you eat it... I know where you live. They make a lovely couple. No, they won't. <clears throat> you could be the maid of honor. A vision in mauve crinoline. Idiot boy Tom could be best man. Are you wonderful? Yeah, well, that's not going to happen. Now go away. What if it did? Hmm? I mean, Mountjoy's wrath would know no bounds. Femoral artery. Yes. What are you doing? Trying to save your life. Ready. You're beautiful. Thank you. I was first in line when they handed out bodies. Seriously, I was the first in line. There. Now, this is going to hurt you a lot more than it's going to hurt me. Just relax. Whenever human beings are in trouble, that's where you'll find them. They may be tinkers or tailors, soldiers or sailors, nurses or bin men or strangers in the street. Perhaps even, and this is hard to believe, I know, Lawyers, they're here to help, to comfort, to guide. I need that fish kettle. Patience. This is Sheringham.
Bugger off. I am cooking. He's where? He owes us, Dad. Major Parker. Who's that guest? You're an army psychiatrist. I am. Apparently you have my colleague. Yes, he says he got lost. If that's what he says, then that's what happened. He saved one of my soldiers' lives, Mr. Guest. Yeah, he does that sort of thing. So you won't be pressing charges? No. Good, thank you. Can I come back, then? So have you always wanted to be a soldier? Since I was a kid. None of my family were ever in the forces. It's what I always wanted. Now they'll go to Afghanistan without me. Wasn't that a good thing? You won't get killed. So what happened? With the knife? It was just a silly accident. Put that woman down, Tom. Paddy's Private Pearson. How are you feeling? Better, thank you, sir. Come on, Tom, we're off. Uh, look, this is Laura. She... Now! Next time you want to commune with nature, don't do it in the middle of a battlefield, OK? Do you think Laura really accidentally stabbed herself? None of my business. Thank you for everything you did for Private Pearson. Sir? What just happened? What? Nothing just happened. There was something between you and Sergeant Faber. No, there wasn't. Come on, let's get out of this bloody place. Please let me do the closing speech. Next time, I promise. I'm sorry if I was a bit snappy with you yesterday. It's men and women in uniform running around with guns. It gives me the willies. It always has done. All right. Hello, gentlemen. Oh, very funny. Very droll. Look, I popped a rib. 
Have you got a moment? I have to talk to you professionally. Let me guess. Private Pearson is going to be court-martialed and you want us to defend her. What's the charge? Attempted desertion. Contrary to Section 8 and Section 39 of the Armed Forces Act. She said it was an accident. Look, we're asking these people to go to war. They have to have complete trust in each other. There are a dozen other lawyers in town. But it's important to the regiment. She's seen to get the best defence available. Before you find her guilty anyway. We'll take the case. What? She's no coward. I know she's not. Thank you. I'll make arrangements for you to talk to her. Yes! My first court martial. Is it yours? No, it's not. Oh, <laughs> it's cool. Hold still a second. Well, oh, sorry, does that hurt? No, no, uh, uh, a little bit. <laughs> well, maybe if you just kind of spin, spin, spin around. Oh no, 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 that's no? not doing it either. Uh, how fond of your hair are you? Oh, it's quite fond. So you should be. Your name's not Rapunzel, is it? Hannah. My name's Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> You really are a bastard. You were always telling me we're not to interfere. Now you're saying I should push Hannah and this Major together. I'm not saying interfere. I'm saying facilitate. You realise that Mr. Mountjoy is convinced you'll fail. Convinced this clock will start ticking again. He's wrong. Well, then prove him wrong. Did you know the maximum sentence for attempted desertion is life in prison? Yeah, it's not going to happen. If she's found guilty, there'll be a custodial sentence, but it'll be more like a year. Tom, Zach has something to tell you. Listen to me. I know you're excited about the court-martial. I am. Very. It's important that Hannah and this major head shrinker chap spend some time together. OK. So I'm going to ask her to assist me on this one. What? No. No, you can't. I know it's unusual to work with a barrister from another chambers, but it's not unprecedented. This is my case. I found her. Tom, Zach is right. There'll be other trials for you to show us what you're made of. Why do we always do what you want? Why not me? Because I'm your superior. been asked to defend a soldier at her court martial. Lucky you. Only, um, I was wondering if you're not too busy. Spit it out, Mr. Guest. I thought we could do it together. You and I. Oh. Why me? Because I think I might need your female insight. Am I outrageous brilliance? Well, I too, obviously. Tom's all right with this. Tom understands completely. English and guest. I like it. Zach's tenacity. I don't understand. Don't you? Well, he's clearly attracted to you. Zach? I don't think so. Come on. Anna. He shakes like a leaf whenever you're near. He does not. Has he ever said anything to you? Would you like it if he had? I'm... Not interested in a relationship, not with Zach Gist or anyone else. Right. Well, enjoy the trial, Hannah. Bring glory down upon us.
know what they're going to say, Laura? That you're a coward. That you wounded yourself to get out of going to Afghanistan. But I know that's not true. I've seen men so afraid that they would kill themselves rather than face up to that fear a moment longer. I don't see that fear in you. Can you tell us what happened, Laura? I was cleaning the blade. During a battle? My hand slipped. And the blade went six inches into your thigh, severing an artery. Don't you dare lie to me. Mr. Gibbs! I'm going to get you off this charge, Private, but you stop lying to me and you stop lying now. Come on, Laura. Help us. Are you protecting someone? No. Someone in your platoon? Sergeant Faber, perhaps? You're a bad apple, Laura. This regiment's best shot of you. Zach! She'll let her friends go off and fight. Go off and do her dirty work for her. I didn't do it. Then who did? I just know Laura would never hurt herself like that. How can you know that? We started our training on the same day. We're best mates. I know how desperate she was to get over there to see what it was like. Does she have any enemies, Sophie? No. She's really popular. A leader. I can't think of anyone that might have wanted to hurt her. What about Sergeant Faber? I'm going back to base. You know, Zach Gist is a brilliant lawyer. Maybe he'll say that she didn't know what she was doing, that she was scared half out of her wits. Dishonorable discharge. That would kill her. The army is her life. He'd been hitting on her for weeks. Who had? Sergeant Faber. When Laura finally told him to get lost, he went mad, smashed up the mess. Do you think he could have stabbed Laura? He'd stab his own grandmother if she looked at him funny. Really? He'd stab his own grandmother? <laughs> Don't mess with him, I'm telling you. Just leave it alone. She's now saying that someone else stabbed her. Who? She refuses to say. Good old esprit de corps. See that machine gun machine gun, chaps? Why don't you take a stroll towards it? Do you have a problem with the army, Mr. Gist? You're the psychiatrist, Major. What's your opinion of Private Pearson? My opinion is that she's psychologically stable. Perhaps stabbing yourself in the leg to avoid being blown up by a bomb is the sanest action a person could take. Sorry, may I suggest we discuss this tonight over a salon and a decent Bordeaux? Um... I just hope you know what you're doing. That's all I'm saying. Hannah's been through enough. It's what he wanted. This is where Faber drinks. Yeah, um, remind me again why I'm here. You're here because you've got a face like a wet Wednesday in our growth. So I get to sup with some squaddies? Oh, joy. Right, I'll do the talking, all right? No, not all right. I found him, I'll do the talking. <laughs> Talk away, Tom. You lost. Just thirsty. We're Laura Pearson's defence team. Yeah, I know who you are. What do you want? To talk to you, Sergeant Faber. Did you not hear the man? We're thirsty. seen a ghost. I'm fine. Just waiting for uh, Mr. Gist. Well, didn't he call you? I guess something came up. He had to see to you, so... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like it's just you and me, I'm afraid. <laughs> She's a coward. You get no help from us. You asked her out. Yeah, well, even cowards can have nice tits. Still, Better she falls apart here than out on patrol in Helen. Mr. Sheringham's getting drunk. Yes, I noticed. Better get around him before she drinks the place dry. <laughs> Sergeant Faber, did you stab her because she spurned your advances? Oh, those are brave words for a young lad. I think it's a perfectly reasonable question. If you'd prefer to answer it in a military court. I don't think she did it. Then I'll see you could have an opinion. Now piss off. Oh, if there's one thing I despise more than a bully, it's an army bully. I don't give a bollocks what you think. When you've been there, then you can have an opinion. I drink to help a girl who 
is this Colonel Puff Puff? So, what's kept you in the army all this time? Well, I've seen some extraordinary things and met some extraordinary people. Killed them all, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> bad joke, bad joke. <laughs> no, the army, well, the regiment, it's, it's everything to me. Which is why this whole business with Pearson is... She didn't give you a thing, did she? No, nope, nothing. <laughs> anyway, how about you, Hannah? You and Mr. Guest, um... What? You know? No, God, no. Oh, <laughs> OK. So, why isn't there a Mr. Hannah in your life? There was someone once, but... It's too boring. I'll be the I... judge of that, soldier. <laughs> He said to meet him in our favourite restaurant. He had something he wanted to say to me. You mean he was going to pop the question? I waited and I waited. And he never came. I mean, never, ever. I've never met the guy, I never will. But I can honestly say... He's a bloody idiot. <laughs> As I was going over the far-flung Kerry mountain, I met with Captain Farrell and his money he was counting. I first produced my pistol, I then produced my rapier. Said, stand and deliver, for you are a bold as saver. Mash up, Oh, yes, he has. Come on, let's get you home. If you think of anything at all that could help Private Pearson, just let me know. Let's go. Where's Tom? Tom! Sophie. Laura needs Can I help, help you? I have a few questions for Sophie. Look, no more questions. Do you want to start? <laughs> what the hell do you think you're doing? I you'd gone to bed. I wasn't tired. What's happening to us? Mrs. Sheringham? I know. I know. I'll talk to her. And you, Zach? What's happening to you? I'd done a long tour and I was gagging to get home for some R&R. &R. Then some bloody Serb popped Archduke Franz Ferdinand. First World War? You were there? I've seen some things, Tom, but I've never seen anything like that. It was disgusting. Can you have told me this at home? 24th of August, 1914, Belgium. I was a captain in the first Cheshires. The British were outnumbered, legged it. But the Cheshires never got the order to retreat. We... They were... slaughtered. The few survivors were completely surrounded. They waited to die. I couldn't let them die. Not like that. I couldn't do it. What did you do? There was an old hidden mining road. I just showed them where it was. No way. That was you. Do you want to lay, boys, now? You were the Angel of Mons. So what did Mr. Mountjoy do? In the circumstances, he was very calm, very reasonable. Really? No, not really. For the next four years, I served on the Western Front. My task to defend a court-martial, the poor shattered bastards the army called cowards. Every dawn for four years, I heard those boys cry for their mothers and their gods before they were executed. How many times did you win? In four years, let me see, um... None. Not once. 
Not a single time. Well, then it's time you did win. Sharingham, Billy is dead. Go away. Did you really think that could be him? Hmm? Mr. Sharingham? Fuck off. When's your wedding anniversary, Mr. Sharingham? Hmm? You bastard. So I can't remember, does he? Naughty boy. You may think that I'm the weak link, uh -huh. but I won't break. Look at me, Mr. Sharingham. You won't. Get to Zach's for me. Look me in the eye, Mr. Sheringham. Billy. Billy! Private Pearson was taking part in the regiment's last full exercise before leaving for Afghanistan on what would have been her first tour of duty. Like any young soldier in such a position, she was nervous, frightened. No! Unlike other young soldiers, Private Pearson decided to do something about it. She took her own bayonet and stabbed herself. No doubt hoping for a flesh wound. No, it's not true! Silence! In her fear and incompetence, she cut through her femoral artery. It was only due to the remarkable quick thinking of a member of the public, a trespassing member of the public, that this is a court-martial and not a coroner's inquest. Richard Pembroke. Go to hell! You look so like him. You sound so like him. I never got your letter. I'm sorry, Carl. I've moved on. I was teaching in an orphanage in a remote part of northeast India. And uh, no mail came there, believe me. And then a few months after I returned, I just happened to be passing by the old post office in the village. And uh, a fella came out and he gave me a letter. And that's how you found out that Billy was dead? That's how I found out about the illness. That's how I found out about the funeral. I am so sorry, Carl. I think... I think when you didn't reply, I assumed, for whatever reason, that you didn't want to know. You've no reason to apologise to me. Mm. This is Sheringham. It's what everyone calls me now. I can't call my brother's wife Mrs Sheringham. <laughs> How about if I call you Birdie? How'd you know he called me that? There's another letter waiting for me. Post office. This was from Billy. I have found a love so brilliant that it banishes all shadows except that one tiny unbanishable shadow that something so wonderful must one day end. It is my dearest wish that one day, Carl, you will meet her, my astonishing and wondrous wife, my Bernie.
I'm so glad you're here. I gathered the platoon and then realized that Private Pearson was missing. I instigated a search and we found her. Badly wounded? Yes, sir. Can you tell the court where you were before you gathered the platoon together? Sir, Sergeant Faber is not on trial. I was in the command vehicle with Major Parker. What the hell are you doing here? You know something. Get out. Don't be afraid. Trust me. Get out before I raise the alarm. Who are you? Tell me what happened. Now. You're a coward. What? You let your best friend go to prison for something she didn't do. Who said she didn't do it? I looked into her eyes as the life was ebbing out of her. She was brave. Shut up! But I look into your eyes and all I see is fear. You shut up! Help! Once in your life, Sophie, be a soldier. in Iraq and Afghanistan? Yes. So you're an experienced soldier. Indulge me for a moment, Sergeant. What are your definitions of fear and cowardice? How would you differentiate? Well, fear is what every soldier feels. And cowardice? Cowardice is acting on that fear to the detriment of a fellow soldier. to the detriment of a fellow soldier because of fear. Your Honour, Mr. Gist cannot stand This woman's there. career, her life, is in the balance. Have the courage to tell the court what you know. Tell me what happened, Sergeant. <laughs> tell me what happened, Sergeant. Faber. Faber, cover me. It's gonna go. It's gonna go. Please. Make it stop. What on earth's the matter, Sergeant? Faber, return fire. Faber! I can't do this on my own. Faber. It's gonna go. It's gonna go. the man, Sergeant? A friend? Who was he? A guest, for God's sake. Tom? Mortar. We're waiting for the bomb squad. Bozak! Get off me! Wait for the bomb squad! Please, Zach, you'll kill yourself! Stay very still, mate. Very still. Remember when you said it hurts to buggery when you die in this world? Yep. I remember. Are you telling the truth? Yes. Sort of. What do you mean, sort of? You don't get to come back. You failed. 
This wasn't my fault. Not how Mr. Mountjoy sees it, I'm afraid. Never get to come back. I like it here. I've only just started. Don't move. I saw hundreds of these in the Somme. And they... Any what? They didn't look quite like this one. <sighs> oh, we're gonna die, aren't we? Not me. I've got a case to win. I need something to dig it out with. Private Capel! Don't touch anything. If you release the pressure on the detonator, it'll go. Private Capel, you stay where you are. We have to get the bike off him without releasing the pressure on the mortar. How do we do that? Just do exactly as I say. You seem very calm. Never let a bomb see your fear. That's what my dad always said. the worst thing about fear. Fear itself. Done. Does that mean I can... No! no! Okay, okay, okay. Push down hard on the mortar with me. Tell me about your father. He was in the army. In this regiment. Bomb disposal. Uh, sorry, can we have this conversation another time? He served with Faber. He died because Faber wasn't covering him. I used to blame him. I don't know. Right, roll away. <laughs> My dad died. I was terrified about going away. I asked Laura to make it look like an accident, but she refused. And we had a fight, it stuck in her leg, and I panicked. I ran away. So Faber covered for you? I think Tom's right. This really isn't the best time for this conversation. Right. Drag the bike to here. We can push it down on the mortar. It's heavy. Help him. You sure you can? Do it. slowly up the hill. How terrified were you? Not terrified. Just, just a bit nervous at first. I stabbed Private Pearson, sir. <laughs> New underpants for Mr. Greening. I have to admit, Mr. Gist, life is rarely dull around you. It's my great failing, I suspect. Do you know Major Parker? Yes. He asked me out on a date. And um, what did you say? I said yes. Well, that's good. Isn't it? Yes, very good. <laughs> <clears throat> I should really get on. Yes. We worked well together, didn't we? Yes, we did. Enjoy your date. You haven't got anything else to say? No, I don't think so. <sighs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. It was amazing. His, his voice. If I, if I close my eyes, it was just like having Billy back in the room. I'm so pleased for you, Mrs. S. When do we get to meet him? Soon. But tonight, he's all mine. I have a thousand questions.
Mr. Mancho will be very proud of you. Zach, you should be really proud of yourself. Well, regiment always comes first. Slings and arrows, Mr. Gist. Ups and downs. And even if it is sometimes a wet Wednesday in our growth, one day, one day soon, it'll be a sunny Saturday in Venice. I promise you. The hero of the hour. Have a drink. I don't feel much like a hero. Well, you cleared Laura Pearson's name. She was broke and you made her whole. Yeah. Sophie Cable thought she was a coward. You showed her she wasn't. Uh, there's an interesting case coming up. ABH. I'd like you to take it. But what did I save them for? So they could go to war and get themselves killed? Or kill others? Do you like art? It's called the return to the front. So these soldiers are going back to hell, essentially. But look at them, Tom. Can you imagine the courage of these men? The things they've already done and seen. And yet here they all are, together, preparing to return to Armageddon. Because that's what you do. You stick together. No matter what the cost to yourself. Do you think we can learn from them? Richard Pembroke would say no. Look at this one. He looks terrified. Well, so would you be if you had to wear a rough woolen skirt next to your Dardanelles. Is that you? When Mr. Mountjoy seemed a long, long way away indeed. John. <laughs> You'll be in love with Hannah by now. I was. So we're sort of soldiers, aren't we? What? Sent on missions, following orders, doing our best. Mm. It's not considered polite to thrash a poor metaphor to within an inch of its life. I'm the idealistic young private on his first tour of duty. Optimistic, brilliant. Naive, irritating. And you're the grizzled old veteran. Seen it all, cynical. Never made it above private, never will. Yes, thank you. What does that make Mrs. Sheringham? She's the best of us. To Mrs. Sheringham. Long to reign over us. Mrs. Sheringham. Without whom we would be up a very unpleasant creek indeed. Shit creek. <laughs> so, Hannah was Richard's big weapon and we've disarmed her. Be on your guard, Tom. He'll come after us with everything he's got now. Can I say something, Zach? If you must. The Angel of Mons. You are the man. <laughs> Done. 
Marcus Hale killed his own brother. He even confessed. He's 110% guilty. I swear, Mr. Guest, I'm an innocent man. Oh, God, you feel like him. Would you really mind if I were to hold out one last time? She's made her decision, Zach. You put her in danger to get at me. Eternal Law is coming soon to DVD and is available to pre-order right now. A certain key witness has the power to turn the whole case around, but at what cost? Law & Order UK is tomorrow night at nine. For all.